I have a good feeling. Let's see. Move my notes. All right. Oh! Hey! What? <laughs> Wait. That was excellent. That was awesome. Okay. Ooh. Wow. Welcome to Learning in the Making. I'm your host, Aran. Um, I have been saying that today's episode is out of this world. We are joined by NASA educator Brandon Rodriguez, who is in Southern California. Um, and I will let Brandon say a little bit about himself. Hey, how's it going, everyone? I'm, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, really excited to get this chance to build uh, some cool models of our, our uh, Perseverance rover now exploring Mars and excited to chat with you guys about something I'm clearly excited about all the time, which is space. Uh, I love talking about it. Um, it's a great time for space and uh, we've got a really cool activity lined up. Okay, I'm, I'm super excited to have you. Can you let us know a little bit about uh, the project we're going to be doing together today? Sure, absolutely. So I, I, um, I, have, I have a really cool gig. I'm very, very fortunate. I work at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, as, as you know, and I work in the education office, which means I get to work with teachers and students across the country, and we build curriculum, we build activities for teachers to take to their students to get excited about science. Um, and what better activity for us to do than to look at how it is that we kind of engineer uh, the, the type of spacecraft that we are sending to Mars. So if you kind of kept up with this exciting time, uh, in early spring of 2021, we landed the Perseverance rover, our most advanced rover, our fifth rover to ever land on Mars. Um, and it's been driving around now and uh, it's really uh, just, just begun to explore surface operations. Um, as, as mentioned though, it's the fifth rover, which means that We've learned a lot over the years. One of the things that we've really focused on is how it is that you safely drive on Mars. And if you look at some of the early rovers, you'll see the wheels are one of the things that kind of evolved the most. As rovers get bigger, uh, they drive around for longer. How is it that you keep the wheels safe? And when I hired into JPL uh, just five years ago, I remember seeing pictures of the Curiosity rover, the rover before Perseverance and the wheels are really starting to get torn up. Remember that, that these are not tires, like something you would drive on, uh, on a road here. Um, they're wheels made of metal. And as the Curiosity rover is driving over rocks and uh, you know, this kind of rough terrain of Mars, the wheels just get shredded. And one of the big challenges for Perseverance was to determine what should we change about our wheel design so that it could more effectively stay healthy, right? Not, not get as damaged so quickly. And in fact, I have one of the model wheels to show you guys today. Um, so this is uh, actually a, a replica of one of the rover wheels. You can see it's quite large, right? About half the size of me. Um, and it weighs about 40 pounds. Um, it's aluminum on the outside and titanium on the inside. So really strong, light metals. And what you can see is one of the big changes was this design here. It's kind of lightly waved design versus Curiosity's kind of zigzag design, which was catching rocks and, and kind of forcing them to puncture the, the wheels. So uh, that's what we're going to kind of look at today is how can we design ourselves uh, better wheels uh, and kind of tinker around with what kind of rovers, you know, uh, would, would you build? What would your wheels look like for the next rover? Maybe the rover after Perseverance. Mm. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that, Brandon. Um, that's that's super exciting. You know, I think about um, just the the variety, the vast variety of different types of tires that we have just here on Earth. Um, it's it's quite a lot, and they do have different um, different purposes. So I'm I'm excited to learn more about that today. Yeah, well put. Right, it's the right tool for the right job. Mm. Absolutely. Lovely. Okay. Um, can you let us know what materials we're going to need for today's project? Sure. So we're going to kind of effectively build a rubber band powered rover. And it's going to look a little bit like this in the end here, right? I'll get you guys a little, a little close up of this. 
you can see uh, I've just taken some household materials here, some old cardboard boxes. I have a straw, some candy wheels, and a, a rubber band with a pencil or a pen inside. Um, and by no means do you have to use the same materials I used, and you don't even have to make it look just like the one I used either. Feel free to really explore just whatever you have laying around the house. The important part is that we kind of build a prototype and then we'll make some changes and see what we learn each time. Awesome, thank you. Okay, I got my materials ready to go. What do we, what should we do first? All right, what I like to do first is I start with the body of, of my vehicle. And so you can, this is probably where you have some of the most flexibility. You can make yours kind of um, short and long, like a drag racer, or you can make it kind of boxy. Um, I'm gonna try something a little different than the one I showed you, why not? Uh, so I've just got kind of a, a piece of cardboard here, and I'm gonna fold it, uh, you know, into thirds, uh, just so that I have something I can kind of put my axles through. That's okay. about, about symmetrical, right? Okay. Um, I think I will make mine's the opposite of yours. So the the sides need to be symmetrical, but the, the bottom can be different. Yeah, you can make it as wide and as long as you like. Maybe this is a little tall on the side, but we'll, we'll see. You can always change it later. Okay. Okay, I feel like I've gone with like the complete opposite, maybe. That's good, I'll give us a, a range to work Which with. is like this long <laughs> and short. Yeah, it looks like those racers, right, that just like, you know, they go really, really fast in a straight line really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Like, what? what is that? Um, oh my goodness. The Little Rascals. Little Rascals. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that film. Um, and once I have that, I, I find the next step is to take a, like a sharpened pencil or a pen. And what I want to do is I want this to be kind of like my rear axle of the car. So I'm going to push this through carefully, carefully. Don't, mm -hmm. don't accidentally stab yourself a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to kind of weasel this through and make it a nice hole on both sides. And voila, I've got a nice little rear axle here. Okay. We're looking a little, a little wonky. Maybe not my best work, but... Okay to start. Okay to start. Okay. Now the pencil on the back is going to be nice and strong so we can tie our rubber band to it. But on the front, we don't need uh, another pencil. You can use one, of course, feel free. Um, but if you don't want to, you can just as easily take a, a drinking straw mm. and kind of just uh, take that to the front. That might uh, help out a little bit. And this will be where we have our front wheels. Mine's a little, since mine's so skinny, kind of like yours, I don't, I don't need a whole straw. So I'm gonna cut this down a little bit. Mm. Okay, I think I will go with a, a pencil here. Got the stronger option. Yeah, I only I have jumbo straws. Um, and oh. <laughs> our little candies I don't think are gonna fit around that, so. That makes sense. I'll go with the pencil here. <laughs> So Brandon, what was, um, can you share a little bit about your path into the sciences and like specifically space science? How did you become interested? Yeah, you know, it, it really is, it really is such a cool journey. I'm, I'm so fortunate, I think every single day of just how lucky I am. 
Um, I was actually traditionally a, a chemist. I worked in, in research science for uh, seven or eight years um, before I became a teacher. I became a high school classroom teacher. And um, I was uh, teaching chemistry in Houston when I actually got a call uh, to, to work at NASA's uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, uh, which is it's out in LA and I couldn't drive fast enough. Uh, so I was so, I was so excited uh, to, to move out here and, and be part of this. But I never really had aspirations of working for NASA. I hear a lot of, a lot of stories all the time of people, oh, I'd always dreamed of it, I'd always dreamed of it, and I, and I didn't. Um, but it just goes to show like how many really cool jobs there are in science. And then sometimes they'll just kind of, they'll come to you, right? Uh, science is everywhere. It's so, it's, you know, it's such a wide field of, of, uh, of, of expertise now. So it's kind of cool. Like, you know, you don't have to have a plan. The plan can come to you. Mm, I love that. Thank you for sharing. Okay, I think I have my pencil ready to go. I used a lot of tape here. <laughs> Looking good. So what I like to do is I like to use these uh, little um, mint candies here mm -hmm. as my front wheels. And if you have like um, like the more sugary candy ones, that's totally fine too. I don't keep those around because like then they get ants. <laughs> we found that out the hard way in the office. Mm -hmm. So these ones are a little bit better for, for the classroom. You can have them in your, in your classroom for a while without risk. Uh, but those are gonna be my little, my little front wheels. Oh my goodness, look how crooked this is. What have I done? We're, we're going to fix this in the ground too. Um, but yeah, so I've got a little front wheels and I've got a rear axle now. Okay. I'm doing pretty, pretty good in terms of how far along, but I can tell we've got some revisions to make. Okay. I have interesting, let's see. I have these very old lifesavers. From who knows when. <laughs> still packaged. <laughs> still packaged. Just kind of stuck to the package. Um, okay. This seems... Should I try to get it, like, more on than that? Oh, no. I, I, I think it's fine. As long as they can kind of roll, right? Just so your rover will be able to drive. Hmm. A little tight on there? Well, at least they won't fall off. Yeah, a little tight. <laughs> we'll see. If you need more space, you could like put it in your mouth for a bit and then it'll get smaller. You could put it back on. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Has there been uh, anything um, that you've used to substitute for the wheels, the front wheels with the can? Oh, absolutely. If, you, if you'd oh. like, you could even make them out of cardboard as well. Oh. Um, my teacher brain likes to have kids use the mints on the front wheels um, because I really only care about the rear wheel design mm. uh, and I want them to focus on that. But feel free to cut little small wheels and kind of uh, make little circles that you can attach on the front as well. From a materials perspective, it's actually harder for me to get cardboard squares than it is a bag of mints. Um, so I, I try to limit how many wheels they make. Makes sense. Hmm. One I can get from the dollar store, the other I have to cut a bunch of, so. Yes, yes, makes sense. Mm. Yeah, I might have good. to cut me some wheels. We'll, we'll see, we'll see how round one goes. We'll see. But they're kind of, they're bare, they're on the edge. It looks pretty good. Okay. All right, so the hardest step for me, I think, is attaching your rubber band to your rear axle. We've got to get this on here, oops, right in there, mm -hmm. and attach it to the front. We've got to secure these later. So if you have a shorter one like I have right now, you can probably just do this with one rubber band. Um, really, really easy. Mm -hmm. But if you have a longer one, kind of like you do, a good tip is you can tie two rubber bands together. And I'll try to see if I can show this with a little bit of a close up. It's a little bit of a magic trick. So if I've got my two rubber bands here, if I can take one and just kind of sit it like that, well, that looks good, All right? And then I'm gonna 
tie it through. Right? So this guy is going to kind of sit, right? And then you can kind of loop it through from there. So I'll do it a little bit faster. Like so. Nice. Mm -hmm. okay. And you don't need to, you can stretch it. Or if you have longer ones or shorter ones, or maybe you just want a bunch of rubber bands to get a lot of power, mm -hmm. uh, you got a lot of options. But if you ever want to just tie them together, you just kind of sit one on, and then you just kind of pull it through the other side. That's my that's my little magic trick, at least. We'll see mm -hmm. if it's, it's the best way. So Love I have it. a nice. Yeah, yeah, yours looks good. We got a good one here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to tie this on to the back the exact same way. Go back to my camera here. So you can see I've got, and I just want to kind of pull this through. My big sausage fingers out of the way here, like so. There we go. Now I'm tied onto the back there. Ah, okay. Right. Okay. Oh yeah. Wow, you're a natural at this. <laughs> okay. And what is the rubber band for? Great question. So what we'll do is when we wind up our vehicle like so, I can get the rubber band to wind up, get nice and tight here. And then when I let go, it should unwind, right? Oh, wow. So if you remember when you were a kid, maybe you played with these cars that you would kind of like drag backwards and then they would roll forward. Right, That's effectively right. what we're making. So I can already see a problem with my with my device here because when I wind it up and let go, it doesn't move. And I don't know if you're having the same problem, but I can tell it must be because there's too much friction here on the side of my axle. Mm. So I wind, 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 I let go, the pencil doesn't move because it's stuck on the wall. Yeah, same. So. Easy, easy fix, most common problem. I'm just gonna try to kind of like give it a little more give on the cardboard. Okay. See if I can kind of loosen it up a little. Oh, that's starting to look better. Easy, easy fix. So now if I wind this up, wind, wind, wind. Oh, there we go, much better. Now my pencil lets go a little bit. Get it again, wind, wind, wind. If I let go, oh, oh, a little. Yeah, maybe a little more. Wait a That's the game. It's always, this is engineering. Wait a minute. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Mm, still very tight. Oh, yeah, same with yours? Mm hmm. I think I'm gonna. If you're worried about it being too tight, you could also just take the pencil out, take some scissors, and kind of, kind of uh, widen it that way. I was able to do it with my pencil. Just... Yes, that was my next move. I was curious, can it be too wide, or is that what I have to learn? Ooh, that's a great question. Yeah, let's see. Let's... There are definitely some problems you could have with our next step. Okay. But I think so far we're looking pretty good. I'm a little jealous that yours is already so much better than mine. <laughs> Who's the pro here? Someone was practicing. Beginner's actually. luck, some call it. Mm -hmm. Beginner's luck. Okay. Here we go. All right. So we're looking pretty good. Our last little step to finish our body is we need to secure the rubber band. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut two little slits right here on the front of my rover. 
that I can hook this on to, right? So if I can just hook this right here, like so, by cutting two little slits right here and here. Oh, oh. okay. And they don't have to be big, just, just something for it to hold on to. And now, there we go, perfect, perfect. Right. Got a little extra left over. Oh shoot, I cut the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we have a tail. <laughs> Looking good. Okay. So now I'm going to just do a little test. And I've got this nice and wound up. And if I let go, my pencil should spin and the rubber band should release. Oh, perfect. That looks good. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at yours. Nice. That's cool. Okay. I do feel, hmm. Do you think it should be longer? Give it a little, uh, a little, a little strength there. See if you can get like three or four times around. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah. And okay. then if you let go, does it release? Uh huh. Oh yeah, excellent. Looks great. Okay. Looks great. Sweet. Showing me up. <laughs> hey, learn from the best. That's what happens. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do now, before we get to our last step is, I'm just gonna kind of like, now that I've, I've been able to build the, the more delicate pieces inside, I'm gonna like secure everything a little bit more. So one thing I do is I kind of close the top, it's like putting closing the hood of your car a little bit. You don't have to do this, but I like it to just be out of the way. And I saw my, if you remember earlier, my little candies fell off the front. They're not secured. So I'm just going to kind of like put a little something on, on the edges so they don't fall off too. Mm -hmm. It'll be permanent. I can undo it if I want to, but now my wheels stay on. I got some room to work. That, that feels good. I'm really excited that we picked different types. I feel like uh, that will give us a good baseline after our first first test. Mm. Yes. Okay, mine is almost closed up here. Okay. All right, so we're, we're ready for the, the last piece here, okay. which is, as we set out to do, what are our new wheels going to look like, right? So it, we really are kind of in the sandbox. We can do anything we'd like. Hmm. And I can tell you, I like to, to always tell, tell students, the right answer obviously isn't square, right? Don't, don't stop here. But the right answer also isn't perfect circle. Um, and the reason is that you want you want some kind of some friction. You want some grab onto your surface. And if you just have a perfect circle, your your wheels might just spin out. Mm -hmm. So instead, we're gonna try to kind of start with the square and just maybe cut out a shape. Well, you know, it can be anything you like. It can be like gears or mm -hmm. uh, stop signs or throwing stars. I've seen I've seen it all. So mm -hmm. be creative. Anything you'd like to do. Okay. Do you have a feel in mind? Do you have a, a one that you think is going to work best? I was I was thinking some kind of stars. Some kind of star. 
How about you? I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Octagon mm. is my plan, and I I like to cut out one, and then I kind of use it as a trace for the other one. Okay. That way, I know I don't have two different sized wheels, which would probably not be a good thing. Like I said, my teacher brain says, how many of these do I want to cut for students? So I try to encourage them to start with big wheels mm -hmm. and then maybe chop their way down. It's kind of like getting a haircut. Okay. Right? Once you go too short, can't right. go back. Nope. Wait, okay. I don't know. This is a shape I'm drawing out. I don't really know. What Neat. Is Ooh, that looks exciting. And like, I feel like I wanted to do it on all sides, but now my mind is like, how do I do that? <laughs> Something like that. The student mind is the most creative one. They, they always have the, the greatest ideas in terms of just thinking outside the box. Mm. Okay, something like this is what I'm thinking. We'll just see. We will see what happens here. At the very beginning, you mentioned, uh, you know, different wheels for different kind of applications. Mm -hmm. And I really like what you're doing here. You, you can imagine maybe yours kind of like grabs and crawls. Um, whereas mine is a little bit more like rolls. Mm. So, like yours could be like an all-terrain kind of thing. What if we were trying to climb something steep? Yeah, I I I am glad you see. <laughs> I'm glad you see that because I was um, I, listening to you talk about the the different things to consider. Um, you said something that reminded me of hands or that like sounded like hands like these wheels need to be able to grab so i don't know that's the idea here <laughs> yeah and uh, you know, have to imagine yes we're exploring mars now but maybe in the future we explore completely different planets or asteroids or or craters on the moon um and the wheels we use on mars are probably not the same wheels we would use then mm -hmm. so really there's no wrong answer it's just about when you would use your answer so kind of, it's kind of a cool way to look at things, right? Not, there's, there's no mistakes. Mm, I hear that. How long did it take to get for Perseverance to get to Mars? How long was that journey? Oof. Yeah, it turns out space is very, very, very big. Uh, <laughs> so it took uh, about seven or eight months for, for uh, the, the rover in its capsule to be able to travel from Earth to Mars. Um, so... Even though Mars is our nearest neighbor, you got to think about how far that is, uh, you know, to travel literally uh, hundreds of, of millions of miles. Um, so if that took eight months to get to Mars, how long would it take to get to the next planet, Jupiter, or even beyond? So a lot of people ask me, well, you know, why are we exploring Mars? Well, Mars is interesting because it does kind of look like Earth. But another question is, you know, where else would we explore? It's, you know, we can't wait five years to send a mission to Jupiter every every time. So mm -hmm. uh, you kind of you kind of work with what what's in your neighborhood. Makes sense. I heard from a podcast recently, um, a podcast called How to Survive the End of the World, um, that the landing space for Perseverance was named after Octavia Butler. Yeah, so there's it's it's really cool. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not at all involved in in the naming of, of uh, these locations, but it is really neat to see what they kind of pay homage to, right? Mm. Um, 
And so all of these different places are kind of named after different um, people, important cultural locations here on Earth. Mm. You know, uh, so it's kind of it's kind of neat to see how we um, imagine our world on another world, right? Um, so I don't know. I, I I always think it's I think it's cool that when scientists see those parallels. Mm. Awesome. Okay. Well, speaking of parallels, here we are. Ever the artist. Look at those. Those are exciting. <laughs> we'll see so, if it gets me anywhere. All we need to do now is get these attached. And just like before, you can kind of use your pencil to poke through. Um, I'm going to use my scissors. And again, just remember, be careful. Don't, don't accidentally poke yourself. Mm -hmm. And you really want it to be kind of as close to the middle as possible. and on the same place in both of them, right? Yes. Symmetry is your friend. Okay, so I drew a little dot and then I'm just gonna try to go through both of them. So now I have a, a nice little, you know, a hole to put these on my on my rear axle, my pencil or the pen I chose. And I'm just gonna kind of get those on there. Ooh, this is an interesting one. I try to do something new every time, and I gotta say. <laughs> Not always for the best. <laughs> That's okay though. What is um what's newer about because I know you've done this so many times. So what's yeah, newer <laughs> about this iteration for you? This is the first time I had my back wheels so big that they're almost touching my front wheels. <laughs> oh. So hopefully they don't knock into each other. Okay, that looks very tractor like. Yes, right. A little, yeah, a little, a little something on the side of the road. But it, it's looking good. It spins well. That that gets me excited. Okay. Uh, seems seems to be okay. So how tight or loose? This is an interesting contraption here. Uh, how tight <laughs> or loose should the wheels be on the back um, axle? Such a great question. Probably the most common mistake or kind of error that we come across right in terms of things we need to revise is if the wheels are too loose on your pencil then the pencil will spin but your wheels won't turn and that's a problem mm. so if they are a little loose if you're already kind of starting to feel it you can secure them to your pencil with a little bit of tape and this way you can kind of tape the pencil to the wheel. But I would say you're absolutely right. You kind of you kind of had the foresight to see exactly what what problems we might come across. Mm, okay. Most common one is the pencil spins and the wheel doesn't. So we'll just kind of since you were able to have that foresight. We'll fix that problem before it even comes to us. Okay. Well, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test it because it's mine. Still seems pretty tight, but maybe not. The beauty is if, if even if it works the first time, which it, it doesn't always then you can do something, and if it gets worse, well, you know how to get back, right? We just want to be good scientists. We want to only change one variable at a time. So whenever you do something, try to change one thing, test better or worse, then change one more thing. That way we can keep track of what changes, what parameters give us the best possible rover. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're ready. You ready to test? I think I am ready to test. All right. So I'm going to wind this up. Yep. 
on here. Well, let's see, I'm gonna go this way towards me. Hey, not too wow. bad. <laughs> not great. Um, I can see some problems right away, but that's okay. It rolled a little, but it kind of crawled slowly. Okay. Uh, what about yours? Any any luck? Uh, luck is not the word I would use. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing. Let me see. I'll show you a, another angle. I've never actually used this one before. But we'll see. Okay, this like side situation. Oh, man, yours looks like it's out of a Blade Runner or something. There, that looks really cool. I mean, it looks great, but it just it does not move. A little more form than function. Huh? Currently, so I'm like rolling it, rolling it. That seems that's about as tight as it can go. Then I put it down, and there's nothing. Mmm, so is the rubber band still wound up inside? No, it, it, it rolls back. And then I let it go. And it's just, maybe it is that uh, you just need to tape the wheels. Yeah, so if the rubber band came undone, that means it did spin, but it didn't spin the wheels. Yes. So that gives us a, a quick fix. That's great. Okay, yes, that is exactly what happened. And I could see with mine that a uh, problem I kind of caught earlier, which is how uneven my, right? I can see these are eh, not very symmetrical. Look how that's not great. So even though mine crawled, it kind of had a hard time going its full length. I still had some rubber band left at the end. Mm. Uh, Maybe that's not the worst, right? Maybe slow and steady is actually desirable. Maybe that's a, a, a good thing. Um, but if I want to go for speed, I'm going to have to even out these wheels a little bit, get them on straight. Mm, okay. It definitely went for, for reach. It seemed to go a, a long way. Yeah, you know, not 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 too bad. It was a, It's a very safe, slow and steady crawl. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am going to... Okay, so is now okay to add the new variable? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think I, if I had yours, I'll, my mind is racing with so many cool things I can do. What? Um, yeah, securing your wheels is a great one. Um, from there, I wonder if uh, the kind of the, we'll call them the X shape, if the legs are too long to turn over. So we get a short nose a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean yours. Yours is rich with with really cool possibilities for revision. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So I'm taping them down. Trying to. I'm gonna straighten these guys out a little bit. So these are kind of just some off the cuff questions. Um, but in that podcast I was listening to, um, they were talking about what organizers can learn from scientists and what scientists can learn from organizers. And mm -hmm. I am curious, you um, live and work at this intersection of scientist and educator. Um, and I'm curious what you would say that scientists can learn from teachers and what teachers can learn from scientists. Yeah, it really is. Um, it's a wild blend of two different worlds. Uh, I think NASA is a special place in that because it is such a public facing institution, everyone knows NASA, you know, the logo and, and astronauts and Mars. Um, they are a little, those scientists are, are a little bit more um, prepared for like communicating science, mm. uh, which is not always the case in, in all sciences. Mm. Um, but educators, we 
we know how to speak to kind of share, right? Not, not just to say the words and have someone listen, right? But like to, to really convey what it is we're excited about and, and what makes things work. That's a, that's a teacher quality. Scientist is about discovery, um, but sharing feels like more of an education skill. Uh, so being between the two things, it's, it's really allowed, you know, I think me and people like me to say, well, this works and here's why, but here's why it's exciting. Here's why you should care. Here's how you could do it, right? Um, I think it, it really opens up the playing field from just being for scientists and being for everyone. Mm, lovely, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so I have made a shift here. And maybe- Time for round two? Yeah, maybe we'll get some movement. Maybe not, I don't know. Oh, I'm rooting for you. Um, okay. Dang it. Well, okay. Mine a little test here. Oh, worse. Oh, I, mine's worse now. What worse have I now? Done? Oh, no. That's okay, though. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. You got a little bit better. I got a little bit worse. It did. Oh, goodness. Okay. The spring is sprung. It, do, it needs like a little. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it does need a little help turning over. Wait, let's see. Okay, where is yours at right now? So mine, I can tell, the problem is when I tried to straighten these wheels, I lost uh, some, some strength on one of them. So one of them is spinning faster than the other. Mm -hmm. uh, so quick fix, again, I just gotta kind of secure the wheels a little bit like you did on your, your first revision. Okay. So I'll, I'll say too, as we kind of get close to finishing up, that we've kind of made, you know, like qualitative reviews as to whether or not we're getting better or worse, mm -hmm. but feel free to kind of, you know, be a good scientist again. You can practice these skills. You can measure how far your rover goes each time. You can kind of maybe try to keep constant how many times you wrap your rubber band inside. Um, Lots of good opportunities to practice those scientific skills and saying like, you know, how can I standardize this? How can I make it a good experiment? Mm -hmm. How can I be sure it's reproducible? That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, if I were keeping, let's see, I've had like, Test one, test two, um, they both, one went absolutely nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Easy measurement on round one. Then test two, I added tape to the back tires or back wheels. And it still went nowhere, but not absolutely nowhere. So I'm curious how you would, how you would write that in the notes, right? So what I'm finding is that, and I think maybe I can show you. Um, so when I wind it up, right? Like I think you were saying that these are probably too long. So it doesn't go anywhere initially, but like with a little help, it kind of has a turn a turnover. Mm -hmm. So it's still not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wants to, it clearly wants to. Yeah, but it looks like it's just too much kind of force to overcome that first turn. So yeah, I would say, you know, without losing the coolness of your wheels, I wonder if you could trim down some of the, uh, the legs so that it's a little less of a of a perfectly flat bottom for it to overcome. Mm -hmm. If you think back to um, your your physics here, remember that if you're ever trying to push a couch or or a chair or something heavy, it's really really hard to start, but then it gets easier once you're already in motion, right? Mm. So you got to overcome that first hurdle of friction. 
And then afterwards, uh, that the friction will push on you a little bit less. So once you get going, hopefully you'll be, you'll be off to the races. Okay. And you did great by keeping the wheels, you know, uh, long and big to start with. You easily trim down. It's not like you have to start from scratch. That is nice. Okay, so I just I really feel like I gotta I gotta get a little something. I gotta figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta figure it out. Okay, so I cut them, and now it looks like um, pointy at the ends. Yeah, right, yeah. So, so I cut the flat bottoms, like you said, and made them all pointy. So I'm curious, or start at the point, rather. I don't know. I have a good feeling. Let's see. Move my notes. All right. Oh! Hey! What? <laughs> Wait. That was excellent. That was awesome. Okay. Ooh. Wow. Nice. Beginner's luck, she said. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, okay. Really so nicely done. Test three. So if I wanted to measure how far it went, how would I do that? Like with the ruler. Well, so I we both have these nice flat surfaces in front of us. So you can imagine if we just kind of maybe had a ruler just even on the surface, or we could mark out um, just kind of standard lengths, mm -hmm. uh, you know, then we could say, you, even if you don't have a ruler, you could say like, put down some sticky notes or something like that. Uh, and it went two sticky notes far. That's, that's mm -hmm. totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, but just to give you a handle on, on, on your success, how far you went versus previous trials. Okay. And this is really one of the things that I, I love most about this activity is, you know, we, we made just a few changes and we got better each time and, uh, you know, kind of, kind of finished off with like a, a good feeling of success there, right? That was a, that was a, that was a big win. Mm -hmm. It was. Now I can't stop. I'm like, okay, I want to measure it now. Yeah, so. And while you do remember something that we, we said earlier, I, I think is important to say, it's okay to go backwards, right? Mm -hmm. if, if trial three didn't work as well as trial two, that's great. That's so good to know. Mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a scientist, we want to have a really good handle of what doesn't work just as much as we want to know what does work, mm -hmm. right? So those, those experiments are just as valuable. Mm -hmm. Wow. It went like 15 inches, 16 inches. That's exciting. So maybe in the future, or if you're like me and you're not going to be able to stop until you like crack <laughs> at the code here, uh, we talked at the very, very beginning about the wheels on the front. Mm. Uh, so you can imagine maybe in a, a future revision, mm -hmm. you could use the little mints that I had that are a little wider, or you could make those extra cardboard wheels that you had said. Mm -hmm. Maybe that would go further, maybe not, but uh, at least now we have it measured and we know what to, what to change. Okay, thank you so much, Brandon. This is so much fun. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, do you have are there any more steps? Anything else you want to do? Anything, um, final thoughts, ideas that you want to share? Well, yeah, just the last thing I'll say to close out is that 
maybe my favorite thing about this activity is that you can take it to any age group. Mm -hmm. So I've had teachers do this with fourth graders where they actually already had the body built and they just had the kids focus on the wheels and that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. Um, but I've even done this with high school students and I make it harder for them by they have to use conservation of energy. They have to figure out how strong is their rubber band using kinetic energy, how far did their car go? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, tons and tons of ways that you can do this with any type of student, any age of student. Um, and it's, it's fun every single time. Oh, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure. This yeah, absolutely. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, to those who have joined, who have watched, participated, um, we would love to, to see you explore this project. Um, so if you, you know, are working through your different iterations, your different prototypes of your cardboard Mars Rover, take some video or take some photos, um, and share them with us. We would, we would love to see how you're working through this project. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to say thank you, Brandon, so much. Um, I've learned a lot and I really enjoy working with you. So just wishing you the best, um, and lots of gratitude for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Peace.